I'm Miranda Markwit. Aaron's going to say I'm Aaron Freeman. And then you're going to say your name. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. You'll know what to do. Just don't get confused and say my name when it's actually your name. <laughs> you know, I do that all the time when I introduce myself. Say, I just you say accidentally, Stacey Johnson a lot? Hey, I'm Stacey Johnson. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm Emily Guy Birkin. <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> it does. I'm not going to tell you how many times I've said I was Emily Guy Birkin. <laughs> <laughs> I hear people have that problem. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Emily Guy Birkin. As usual, wait. I'm Stacy Johnson. <laughs> That's why I have a written script in front of me, just in case. So, yeah, so you don't flub your lines. Yeah. Hey, guys, and welcome to the Money Podcast. This episode, we're talking about making money management fun. You know, every year, people spend nearly $200 billion on video games. That's more than sports and movies combined. Clearly, we're into having fun and playing games. But here's a question. What if we take games out of the fantasy world and put them into the real one? What if we could make doing things like managing our money more of a game and less of a chore? In short, what if we could make money management a good time? That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Stacey Johnson, as usual. My co-host will be financial journalist Miranda Marquit. Hello, Miranda Marquit. Hello, Stacey Johnson. Listening in and sometimes contributing is our producer and novice investor Aaron Freeman. Hello, Aaron. I can't wait to see how you're going to make this fun. I, I, you know, this just sounds like crap to me. I'll tell you that. I'm reading it, but I'm not sure I'm believing it. But you know what? Maybe our guest can help us because this week we have a special guest. It's Emily Guy Birkin, co-author of Stacked, Your Super Serious Guide to Modern Money Management. She's also written books about retirement and how to deal with financial stress. Emily, welcome to our show. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. We're going to get the ball rolling, but first, a very quick disclaimer. Should we discuss specific investments in this show, do not take them as recommendations. Why? Because they're not recommendations. Before you invest in anything, you've got to do your own research. You must make your own decisions. Okay, let's get back to the topic at hand. Before we do, Emily, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and how you got to be where you are today. Uh, So, well, I'm going to answer that last question first. Uh, I uh, tripped and fell backwards into writing about money. Uh, This was, uh, I'm actually an English teacher by training. And um, because I have really terrible timing uh, is how I ended up writing about money. Uh, So I taught high school English for four years. That fourth year, uh, my husband and I were expecting a baby. And that's uh, when we decided it was a good idea to move to a new state. Uh, And uh, my, my husband got a new job. And my baby was due at the beginning of the following school year. So because of that excellent timing, I knew I wasn't going to be teaching for a year. And then again, because we've got, you know, impeccable timing, we put our house for sale. This was in 2010. Uh, I believe it was like three weeks after the uh, first time home buyer credit expired. <laughs> and so it took us 11 months to sell our house in Columbus. So we went from uh, two incomes to one, two people to three, and uh, one mortgage to two. <laughs> so wow. You, you that mean Columbus, first- Ohio? Columbus, Ohio. Yes. Yeah. I used to live in Cincinnati anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, and we, uh, when I was in, uh, that first year, uh, we were in Lafayette, Indiana and, uh, I was like, well, I should probably figure out a way to bring a little money in while I'm staying home with the baby. And I've always been a writer and I thought I'll see if I can find some freelance writing gigs. And, in my head, I was thinking, I'll write about education, you know, uh, parenting, travel, food, you know, all the kind of normal stuff you think of when you when you think of freelance writing. Never occurred to me that I'd start writing about money. Uh, but one of the first writing gigs that I landed was uh, for a financial website. And um, before you think, like, wait a minute, English teacher, finance, where does that come from? My dad was a financial planner, so I did grow up in the industry, and uh, I was a money nerd even as a small child. Um, So, like, I would hang on every word of my father's opinions about money, um, which I I didn't realize until later that my my sister and my cousin's eyes were rolling back in their heads while I was like, yeah, tell me more, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, so I I, I did have a little bit of background in it, um, but I learned on the job very much. Um, That first client uh, loved my work, passed my name along to his friends, um, invited me to the first FinCon. And uh, I found that writing about money fit like a glove. Uh, I really enjoyed finding ways to make money interesting and relatable to people who don't necessarily 
think or or, or want to talk about money. Uh, and it was very similar to um, dragging a, a class of 15-year-olds through Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> there's, a, there's a similar skill set in making something um, work for someone who's uh, decided that they're not interested <laughs> ahead of time. And so, uh, and that's been 12 years ago now. And uh, I've been uh, been doing this ever since and uh, have uh, now five books under my belt, uh, which I, blows my mind. I don't know how that That's happened. a lot of books. <laughs> it is a lot of books. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here with us today because, you know, I was thinking of when you, when you said like 15-year-olds to mid Midsummer Night's Dream, I was actually thinking of my wife. I can talk about her because she doesn't listen to this podcast right now. <laughs> so anyway, she's a person who – now, my wife's a brilliant person. She's a nurse practitioner. Uh, and when you want to talk about medicine, she's all about it. But when I try mm -hmm. to tell her, because she's way younger than me, so I mean, I could die before this podcast is over. Um, so I'm trying to tell <laughs> her, you know, don't. I've got all this money in the stock market. You really need to understand it. And it's like right over her head. Doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Eyes glaze mm -hmm. over, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this, by the way, for 40 years, trying to teach people about money. Literally, my motto is without making their eyes glaze over. I mean, this is literally <laughs> what I try to do. And yet, for some, for some, for some reason, I cannot do that with some people. So anyway, Emily, I, when, this, when this podcast is over, I want you to be able to tell me how to make my wife pay attention to money. And more importantly, I want, to, I want you to fulfill all the promises I made at the intro to the show, which is you're going to make money management fun. You and Miranda, um, actually, are both going to – when we leave this, it's going to be like this when we manage money. Whee! Woo, this is super fun! Like riding a roller coaster. Okay, so so t lead us down this path. What? Do, how do we do this? Oh wow. Okay. So um, <laughs> when it comes to things like trying to teach other people how to how to embrace things like money management, um, I, I, one of the reasons why I'm very glad that my career has been as weird and varied as it has been is because teaching you know 15 year olds how to appreciate Midsummer Night's Dream has a direct influence on how I teach people. Uh, how to um, care about their money in that when my kids are, are, are reading Romeo and Juliet Mid Midsummer Night's Dream and they're going like this has nothing to do with me you want to find something that's going to make it work for them. So uh, one example is when I did uh, Romeo and Juliet with my freshmen uh, I would have them choose a section to rewrite as text messages back and forth. And so that, you know, all of a sudden that's kind of getting their, their, their uh, minds going like, oh, okay, this is cool. Can I use emojis? And, you know, th those sorts of, of, of things. And uh, they're, they're, that gets them to care about what the words are saying rather than just going like, this is hard. I don't understand these, this that's English. That's a great idea. And so it's the same thing with money. When you are um, starting with something that people are averse to for some reason, find the way in that's going to be interesting to them. So uh, an example I like to give is uh, my husband's good with money, but he's not uh, like a deep diver like I am. Like I, I want to like really get into the nitty gritty. I am the person who, uh, you know, when it's time for me to balance my checkbook, which I mean, that's that. that, that dates me <laughs> showing my age, but when it's time for me to update my spreadsheets or something like that, I'll light a candle and pour a glass of wine and, you know, just really enjoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, most people are not like that. So, uh, and if you say... My wife is like that, though. She would definitely pour a glass of wine and do almost anything you want. <laughs> well, and that is, honestly, that is like, if, if you pair your money management with something you enjoy in the same way that I will watch trash TV while I fold laundry gets the laundry folding done. So, you know, mm -hmm. something that you can pair with your money management gets the money management done. But the other aspect of it is start with something fun. So to get my husband on the same page as me, and this was not intentional, it, it, it just kind of organically happened. We were on a road trip and uh, this was back in the early 2000s. And so, you know, we didn't have uh, um, like, we didn't have our, our binder full of CDs. You remember those? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Uh, yes, didn't have a binder full I, have of one, CDs. I have one right behind me in this cabinet, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and so and we're on long enough road trip that you know we're having trouble finding any radio stations, and like that's it gets super boring. This is you know pre podcast, pre everyone having Audible and all of that, and so uh, you know to kind of you know keep ourselves entertained, we asked, uh, and I can't remember who who posed the question, like top ten vacation destinations go, and so you know back and forth, like oh I want to go to Machu Picchu, I want to go to Hawaii someday, you know I'd love to see the pyramids in Egypt. And uh, my husband's number one 
um, vacation destination is to uh, go to the 24 hour um, automotive race in Le Mans, France. Um, he is an automotive engineer and quite the, the, the wow. monkey wrench geek. <laughs> um, and, and That's so cool. I, I'm not super interested in a 24 hour automotive race. Like I, you, you get me for about two hours. I think I got it, but I'm like, I am very interested in France. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and, and cheese and wine and, and all of that good stuff. So, um, it was a week later. Uh, I said to him, you know, after that trip, I was like, I've been thinking about what you were saying about Le Mans. Like, let's start saving for it. You know, like, let's just put a hundred bucks a month aside. And, you know, and he's like, what's that going to do? I'm like, well, you know, just we'll start saving for it. So um, we set up an automatic savings of a hundred dollars a month to go into uh, um, a high yield ish savings account. And um, slowly over time, we started to get kind of a significant amount of money in there, um, which got my husband thinking like, oh, what are some other ways we could use this strategy? Um, and so because we started with this vacation that he really wants to do, uh, we were able to get on the same page to start thinking about stuff that's a little less fun. Like, you know, oh, we're going to need to replace the roof sometime in the next five years. Let's start saving for that. And so um, that is one of the best ways to kind of bring people on board is start with the the joyful stuff rather than the like, we're going to have to replace the roof <laughs> stuff. So, so right. kind of like playing a game, you're getting a reward. Exactly. Yes. Uh, there's. Well, Did you get a lot of money management fit completed while drinking wine in France? <laughs> okay, I, I have to admit we have not yet been. And however, it's not because we didn't uh, we didn't save uh, um, sufficiently. It's because we had children. <laughs> So we had yep. children and at first it was just like, we are not traveling and in, traveling internationally with small children. They're now old enough that they, they'd be good travelers, except for the fact that I have the two pickiest eaters in the world. Like, I mean, I know every parent says their children are picky. I have one who rather than eat something he doesn't want to try, he will projectile vomit. Like he, he can, he can do that <laughs> and has done so in public on multiple occasions. And so he's, he's, he's getting better now, but they still will not eat anything. And we're like, we are not dragging to like, can we get chicken nuggets and French fries through France? So the, we put that one on the back burner. We've been to Hawaii though. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to Hawaii next week. Yeah. So the thing I like about what you're talking about, Emily, is that uh, you guys are connecting it. You said, like you said, to something fun, something that matters mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. right? Something that they may matter. It may matter to you for different reasons. Like he wants to go watch a race, and you're just like, "That's cool. I'm just gonna sit here by the sun, but um, <laughs> and enjoy my wine." But um, but no, I think that that's one of the most important things, and one of the reasons why we dread money management so much is we always think of it as a chore. We mm -hmm. always think of it as cutbacks yeah. and restrictions. Mm -hmm. And so, what are some of the other reasons why, like instead of making it like instead of seeing it as fun, we do see it as just like this hard horrible thing that we're all scared of. Nobody wants to look at their bills. Nobody wants to, That's a really good to do anything. So, so why are we in this place where nobody wants to do money management? Well, uh, so people tend to think of money management as only slightly less fun than a colonoscopy. And so when you have that, <laughs> that sense about money, you're going to avoid it. And so a lot of it comes from um, we avoid bad news. So um, we've all known someone who's like, I don't go to the doctor because I only hear bad news. Or someone who said like, you know, after, you know, the the the, the holidays, they'll be like, I, I'm just going to get rid of my scale. <laughs> So, and um, it's very understandable because it feels like it's more manageable if you don't know. Uh, and so we kind of like hide our heads in the sand and act like, you know, just dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be easier and feel less stressful than actually diving into it and seeing just how bad things are. Uh, the thing with all of those is that the, the, the truth is there, whether you know it or not. And it is pretty much always better to know. Um, you know, I, I, there are some medical diagnoses like, all right, yeah, I probably don't want to know and just, you know, kill over without having any idea of, but for the most part, most of the, these, like this kind of bad news, it's better to know so that you can do something about it. That, yeah, it's interesting, Emily, because, you know, I was just telling my wife's a nurse practitioner, and she's continually telling me stories about how people will come into her office, she'll tell them what they need to do, for example, take blood pressure medication, mm -hmm. um, and then they won't mm -hmm. take it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what? why wouldn't they take it? I mean, it's literally, it's not keeping you alive, it's keeping <laughs> them alive. Well, 
And she, they're like, oh, I don't, don't feel like I mm-hmm. need it, you know, and, and they won't come in for mm-hmm. visits. I mean, they won't confront because, you know, as long as you don't know. And, to, and you know when they come in? When it's too oh, late. When they literally are absolutely. dying. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just, well, and it's this, so hard to explain that. This day and age of Amazon, I mean, that's like instant gratification. Mm-hmm. I mean, for us people like me who are shoppers, I mean, it's so fun to be like, oh, yeah, I, you know, let's buy this little thing and it comes in the door and it's like a little mm-hmm. present. And uh, how do you switch that that gratification over to saying, oh, I, I saved 20 bucks this week. That's really mm-hmm. gratifying. I mean, it's how do you switch that behavior? Uh, that's actually that's something that's really interesting because it, it uh, you can you can make that switch because they're uh, they don't call it retail therapy for nothing. Like you do get a boost. There's 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 a definite psychological boost to, to to making a new purchase. And particularly, I'm thinking with Amazon during the pandemic. You know, with every day the same, and you'd see like, oh, that's a cute mug. I need it, and you know, it would come in the mail, and you're like, yay, this day is different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after having, you know, watched all of Tiger King, you know, you're, you're, you, you've seen the same four walls over and over again. So uh, what I think is really helpful is um, when you start doing money management, um, and this kind of gets to what you were talking about, uh, Stacey, where if you are, um, you don't see yourself as someone who needs blood pr- pr- pressure medication, and you don't see yourself as someone who uh, needs to keep an eye on your money or someone who cares about money, you're not going to do it. So, uh, you know, not wanting to be the type of person who needs blood pressure medication because that's an old person or that's an unhealthy person, you know, right. whatever, you're not going to do it even though it's not in your best interest. So when it comes to money, kind of switching it to like, I am the sort of person who checks on my money once a week. Uh, that's that's tough to do. It's a tough switch to make. But making that switch, and then s- once you start seeing some gains from making that switch, you do start feeling more pleasure from the, hey, my savings account is now over a thousand bucks than you do yeah. from the the new Amazon purchase that comes in. And so it's, you. this is a fake it till you make it thing and why, you know, Pair your the the activity of money management with something that you do enjoy, in uh, so that's the extrinsic motivation, like the the you know okay I'm going to do this because I only eat banana pudding when I'm doing <laughs> when I'm working on my money you know or whatever it is that like indulgence that you do to to kind of get pair with the money management, yeah rewards, rewards. Um, to. Uh, uh, eventually, because you're going to start seeing some gains, you'll have the intrinsic motivation of like, oh, I want to keep doing this because it feels good. So when my husband and I got married, he had bought his house uh, before we got married. We were together, but uh, um, weren't, uh, weren't living together yet. And uh, this was in 2005 when they were throwing bags of money at anyone with a pulse. So uh, he had um, uh, he he put down like a four thousand dollar down payment, and then the rest of the down payment was a home equity line of credit. Um, and so when we got married, I said I am not comfortable with that home equity line of credit just still being there. Uh, it had a minimum payment of I don't know, it was like 145 dollars a month. It was never going to get paid off that way. And so I was like, can we please? focus on on getting that paid off because I, I personally am uncomfortable with that kind of debt. So we lived on his income and we sent uh, the majority of mine uh, to, to get that paid off. And uh, we created a, um, like on a dry erase board in our kitchen, we created a debt payoff thermometer. And like at the quarter um, uh, level, we said, okay, we're going to go get Indian food at this really nice in, uh, Indian restaurant. The half level, we had something else. And at the full level, we had uh, like our, our big prize, which I can't remember what it was. I think we were going to like go away for a weekend. Um, you know, so Something not super expensive, but you know, still a nice, uh, a nice prize. And it got to be where I had to talk him into this. But once we got like to the halfway point, he and I, and this this will tell you how long ago it was. Uh, we were getting the the statements in the mail. We would race home on the day that we knew the statement was coming because we wanted to be the one to color it in. <laughs> like we would like wrestle each other the other over the that's mailbox. Awesome. And that's gamification. Yes. I mean, that's 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 making something mm-hmm. fun. Okay, now let's we have to take a really quick break. Because we have bills and we need to pay them. <laughs> but when we come back, we're gonna do we're gonna say specific things, and I've done some homework so I can do some of these now. Specific things on how to make managing your money more fun. Specific things. Do not move a muscle. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Oh no, I was gonna mention something too. I was reading about this, you know, because I knew you were coming on, Emily, and and um, I, I thought about this. My wife has literally gotten out of bed. I've mentioned her three times now. We'll just call her by her name, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah's literally gotten out of bed. And I'm going, where are you going? I've almost closed my circle. I ne- all I need is 10 more steps. 
and, you know, because she wears mm-hmm. an Apple Watch, mm-hmm. and so she, and she's doing I don't know what it is, ten thousand steps a day, and she's she's a huge dancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we like to go to uh, techno concerts anyway. She dances a lot and she'll do 35,000 steps in wow. a day. And she is keeping track mm-hmm. of them. You know, you know what else is like that? Facebook. You go to a restaurant, you go, you won't believe this. 115 people have liked that we're at this restaurant. <laughs> I mean, this is like gaming, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It's like winning mm-hmm. a contest. And I'm like, well, these people don't care whether we live or die. You don't even know, remember who they are. <laughs> but still, it's 115. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so how, how do we introduce these sorts of concepts, the things that make us go for rewards, mm-hmm. into managing our money? So uh, you see go- gamification all over the place, so like you're talking about with the, with the steps. Um, one that uh, I recently um, experienced was uh, with uh, Noom, which is a, um, a, like a um, yes. diet um, Miranda app. uses it, right? Weren't you using Noom? Uh-oh. Oh, we lost you. We're not hearing you, Miranda. Because I'm on mute. Oh, she's mute. on mute. Because <laughs> uh. when I try to go to take a drink, I like don't want to like have you all listening to my eyes <laughs> clinking around. Um, no, so so I was I was using Noom, uh, but I actually was gaining weight, and part mm. of it is because for me, apparently. Um, it was still like a ca- like I've actually lost um, five pounds since I stopped using Noom, um, <laughs> and I think part of it's because for- this is not one of our sponsors. Then is <laughs> no, it? no, <laughs> but I think part of the reason I I was struggling with it was because like for me uh, it was very stressful to have to like count all the things and mm-hmm. like count mm-hmm. these and it's a calorie restriction you're supposed to stay within certain calories mm-hmm. and you know they're you know and anyway I, it was stressing me out mm-hmm. and I find that when I start which is funny because when, when you're talking about money one of the big things you're supposed to do is pay attention to where you're spending pay attention mm-hmm. to that stuff um, and so one of the things I found was that it was stressing me out. And so then I, anyway, it wasn't working. I quit with Noom. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Wait, does that use, Emily, you were about to mention it and I cut you off. What, what, so, what were you going to say well, about Noom? Well, uh, with Noom, um, what they do uh, for a lot of it is there's a lot of um, uh, behavioral and psychological stuff, which I know quite a bit about because of what I write about. And so the first time I tried Noom, I did the like, eh, yeah, I'm too smart for this. And it didn't work. Uh, and then I decided to try it again. And this time I was like, I'm going to let go of any assumptions and uh, just like, just go with the process. And the gamification actually worked really well. Well, because the way that Noom is set up is you can earn one full coin each day, and there are three pieces to it. Uh, one you get from reading the articles, one you get from weighing yourself, and one you get from um, uh, right tracking what you eat. I hate tracking what I eat. I hate it so much. But because the other two were easy, I'm like, I want that coin. I want that coin. What, what happens with a coin? Nothing. What do you do with a coin? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's, it's, nothing. Just, <laughs> and, just, it's and like closing just your closing circle. circle. Means nothing. Means, it's just something means yeah. nothing. But I, like the fact that I, I, I didn't quite have it would would bother me. And so that's something that uh, um, thinking about what motivates you. Uh, so that's really interesting. Yeah, uh, and and I don't know, I couldn't tell you why that motivates me. But I'm also the sort of person who like, you know, in elementary school, the, the gold star uh, every day of the calendar yeah. really worked for me. And so figuring out what kind of ridiculous little thing is going to motivate you and and go for it. But it's also the 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 flip side of that is, um, Figure out if there are apps or things like that that um, are are using gamification. What are they motivating you to do? So um, there's a, a certain investing app. I, I don't know if I should mention it. That's a you can mention um, it. Robinhood. I feel like is kind of irresponsible in how it gamifies things. Yeah, um, and it's encouraging people to gamble exactly. Even. That's certain. It certainly has been accused of that. Not just yeah. here. I've heard it over um, and over. And so, uh, so that's that's the sort of thing where like it's encouraging behavior. And think about what behavior is it encouraging, and is it for your benefit or not, or is it for their benefit? So, uh, thinking yeah. through like what will encourage you um, when you're trying to put things in place for yourself, and also thinking through like when you you uh, encounter gamification elsewhere, like is this encouraging something that's actually going to you know improve your life or is this encouraging something that's just going to, you know, <laughs> empty your wallet? 
Now, I, I've got a few apps, uh, none of which I've used, and I'm sorry, I don't even know how much they cost, but I'll throw these out here for those of you who are listening and might want to use an app. These are specifically designed to help you do things like save more money and stuff. They're personal finance uh, gamification mm-hmm. apps. One is called Blast. Have you heard of that? No, I don't Either think I know that you? one. Mm-hmm. Either of the three of you. One is called Fortune City. Uh, one is called Bright Money. Mm-hmm. And one is called Long Game. I've heard of and Bright again, Money. I, I have not... <laughs> You've heard of it, yeah. So th- these are these are ways that people out there who are interested in gamifying, mm-hmm. are interested in trying to make their personal finances more fun, might try. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't know how much they mm-hmm. cost. Uh, Noom was expensive, yes. as I recall from what Miranda said. I yes. doubt these things are going to be very expensive, and they may even be mm-hmm. free. I don't know, uh, but that's four things, and we'll put those in our show notes too. But for the, for those of you out there who don't want to do an app. Um, who aren't gamers, but do, but do want your money management to be more fun. I, I've got a few tips, but I, Emily, I want you to stop me and, and add in whenever you've got to. <laughs> well, but just I, a sec, I, before, I wrote start. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say before you go. Um, one of the things that I find is so gamification. Like Emily was saying, you have to figure out what motivates you. Gamification doesn't necessarily motivate me. I get I get bored of the game. That I get you know I get stressed and bored of the game and move on with my life. But um, the only the only one that's working for me with right now is Duolingo because I just like seeing the little fire oh, pop what's up. That? It's an mm-hmm. it's a language learning app. And so like oh, okay. I'm like, I've got a hundred day streak going, so that I like. Mm-hmm. Um so so yeah. But um but I found that what I like is setting up automatic, these automatic transfers. And then I like mm-hmm. the surprise of checking it and seeing how much money. And so Acorns for me has actually been one of my favorite apps to use to make me feel good about like money because I use it for like my spontaneous planning. So like um, my roundup. So every time I have like I have a credit card and I have a debit card um, connected to acorns and so every time i use these things like just like my pocket change goes in and i have it set on like a three times roundup so then it rounds it up and then triples it and so about once a month i go in to look and see where are we at what can i do and so it's like do i get an extra spa day do i get a weekend like a little fun weekend in an airbnb Mm -hmm. and for me like that kind of helps helps me like I love that kind of surprise and like let's see how we've done and and I think that works and too And you just said you yeah. didn't like gamification <laughs> and you're doing that to yourself. <laughs> Is it yeah, so I guess it's like kind it. of a different kind, yeah. And I like the automatic transfers because it's like I'll look in my travel fund, I'll look in my mm-hmm. retirement fund and like I think part of the fun is just like seeing how are things growing and how is that helping me uh reach my goals and enjoy my life more. That that feels like kind of the That's awesome. um, intent. And that was on my list too. By uh, the way, the intentional yeah. way Automation. of um, of uh, like kind of recreating that uh, finding a twenty in a jacket you haven't worn in six months. You know, like right. you're, 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 you've made an intentional way of surprising yourself with money. <laughs> right. <laughs> now we haven't heard from Aaron. Aaron, how do you make managing your money more fun? And I know what you're going to say, Sonia. Your wife manages all the money, and you don't have any fun. <laughs> Yes, that's basically it. That's basically it. No, I, I, I find saving money the worst kind of fun ever. It is so boring. I've watched my bank account grow, and it's boring watching it grow. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's what you have to do. It's, it's, it's better than being poor. <laughs> it is better than being poor. Yeah, you know, the, how I've helped my wife uh, understand money more is using negative reinforcement. So I've said, like, you don't have to pay attention to what's going on in the stock market or know what our savings are doing. But when I die, if you don't, I'm going to leave everything to the Humane Society. <laughs> and and that seems to work. <laughs> no, he, actually, that doesn't work because she knows I'm lying. She knows I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, okay, so I had automation, which you just suggested, Miranda. I yep. also have uh, start with quick wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, if you've got, you know, the old debt payoff thing, you know, do you pay off the debt with the highest interest rate first or the lowest balance first? And, you know, for even though the highest interest rate certainly makes the most math sense, um, focusing on the smallest debt first uh, gives you an immediate win and, you know, keeps you in the game. So depending on what kind of a person you are, that could be a good idea. But starting with any quick win, having $50 in your savings account, $5, I mean, you know, anything. And then when you get fifty dollars, you get a smoothie. You know, when you get a hundred dollars, you know, you you get to download porn or whatever it is that, that floats your boat. I mean, you uh, you got to do what works for you. <laughs> yes, yes. 
<laughs> and I, I didn't mean to blurt that out because I do not download porn. <laughs> you keep it on the cloud like <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> like everybody else does. You don't want it cluttering up don't, your computer. You do not want it on your computer for like in case you do die and you know. <laughs> don't don't worry, we'll edit that out. <laughs> um, <No. laughs> Aaron's going, no, we won't. Um, okay, so anyway. Um, but, you know, whatever it is you'd like to do, give yourself reward. You know, when when I used to lift weights way back in the day, well, even, okay, let me make it more current. I ride a bicycle almost every day. And so I say if I ride uh, 100 miles this week, I get to buy uh, a new phone holder or some accessory for my bicycle. And I did that, I was going to say, when I used to lift weights back in the day, which if you could see me, you know, it was way back in the day. Um, I would say, like, I'm not, until I've, until I've gone to the gym three times a week for a month, I'm not buying new workout clothes. You know, like that, so I'm giving myself rewards like that. So that that's always worked really well for me. Um, okay, so anyway, d- doing what works for you is another thing on my list, which we obviously just talked about. <laughs> and uh, and obviously, you can't know if you're ahead or behind without tracking your mm-hmm. money. So you could give yourself reward just for paying attention, you know, by using Matt or something of that sort, and knowing what's going on. Yeah, and I like to do. Um, s- oh, sorry, I was I was going to say like making. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, so like making a budget and like tracking it like right now so it sort of depends on where you're at right like i have an overall spending plan i'm like this much goes into retirement this much has to go to like rent this much goes to insurance like all of that stuff and it's all automated like we kind of talked about earlier um but i do every now and again probably about every three months i go back through and i use one of those um i use one of those apps and that that like categorizes stuff for you. And so it's kind of fun. It's it's a fun thing for me to sit down, make sure like, okay, does this does is is the spending I've been doing has it been aligning with my values recently? Is it helping me move forward with my goals? And if it's not, then I can be like, okay, well, let's make some changes. But being able to like visualize it and see it there and then compare it to like my life map and my vision board is also mm-hmm. very helpful to me because then it helps me like bring it back and keep everything on track. Because for me, counting like dollars and, and and pennies and making sure I'm in the right budget category just is very stressful. <laughs> do, do you really have a vision board? Because I'd like to see that. Would you put it on camera? <laughs> it's not really a vision board so much as it is a, a kind of a life map that just has like the things I like to do and want to be is able to do Is it mental or is money. it physical? Uh, it's physical. <laughs> But it's also because that sounds like something I could tease you unmercifully about. I would like to yes, see it. Yes, yeah, okay. Well, um, I'll show you my life map at some point. Let me see if I can find some point. the current okay. copy. It's, Wait, it's actually, we're, unfortunately, That's we're bad. almost out of time. Uh, but but well, I really do. I, like I want to bring one yeah. more thing. I want to bring one more. We thing. should dedicate a whole podcast to her <laughs> life map, though. Exactly. We could do that. Um, Go ahead, <laughs> Emily. You wrote a cool, cool little blog on teaching your kids about buying stocks, mm-hmm. and it was mm-hmm. a game. You basically, you know, said, hey, list your favorite, uh, you know, things that you love, your toys or whatever, video games, whatever, name your these things. And then we'll find out what companies sell these things mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll buy the mm-hmm. stock. Mm-hmm. Um, so what can you say to people? You know, obviously we're adults and we're all bent and, and we're all sideways now that we're old. But you can start there young teaching your kids these mm-hmm. games and that, that has a lot of benefits. So what can you say around that? So, uh, Like how you tell your kids that? Well, teaching my, my kids about investing, that started because my older son, it takes after me in a lot of ways. He's, he's kind of a natural saver. Um, and, uh, and you know, like I have my kids track their income uh, and spending in a ledger. Uh, but when we started talking to him about like, hey, you know, because you're, you're, you've got quite, quite a bit in your checking account, like let's start talking about investing. And he just shut down. He's like, I don't know. I don't understand anything about this. And so I was like, all right, let's bring it back to something you do understand. What are your favorite? things. Uh, And so adults can do the same thing because when you start talking about the stock market, most, most people who are not in the financial space will be like that. That's like Greek to me. I don't, I don't understand a thing about it, but the thing is you do. So I'd give the example of my husband. He is uh, an automotive engineer and he also just, he consumes uh, like blogs about cars and um, he reads magazine articles and you know, all kinds of stuff. So he knows things about um, cars that the average person doesn't because he's interested in them. And so 
so he has a sense of, you know, if there's a, a news story about the automotive industry or about uh, fuel or something like that, he has kind of a, a bit of a sense of what that's going to do to the industry or to stocks um, in that industry. So kids are the same way. Adults are the same way. You know, if you are like super into Marvel movies, then you have kind of some knowledge that would be helpful in, you know, choosing some things to invest in. Now, and, uh, would, would you do me a favor and, and complete that circle for mm -hmm. me? Would you, okay, I, I'm interested in Batman. Mm -hmm. No, how are you going to turn that into making me want to like buy Marvel stock or yeah, something? Yeah, so Is that what you're so talking about? with um, okay. so my my uh, younger son loves Batman, and so uh, we actually were invested in it. Was uh, um, Batman is owned by DC, which was owned by AT and T at the time that I wrote the blog, and then uh, that was actually purchased by Discover, uh, and so so we we own stock in that, um, just one, <laughs> uh, but and that was something like we we could look and see like with the new Robert. Pattinson Batman movie coming out. Does that make any difference? Now, because it is owned, you know, so, so much like parent companies above it, uh, it's not nearly as clear as if you're, you're buying stock in something that's, you know, like Google or, or Facebook or something along those lines. But that's the sort of thing where like that can get you in because you'd be like, I do know a lot about that. So um, my apologies. Um, and so that's something that uh, I, can be really, really um, helpful for recognizing like you do know more than you think you do. All right, so you could, cool. easily, could you could you say that those that people that have kids, you know, if you're if you're stumped just trying to figure out how to uh, game your finances, maybe helping your kids game your finances. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we'll teach you as well. The best way to learn is to teach. Um, that is like the because you have to understand it to be able to teach it, and so by by teaching, uh, you are going to make sure that you really completely understand what you're doing. I've been teaching personal finance to people for four decades, and I'm still dumb as a sack of hair. <laughs> yeah, but Whatever. now it's multiple hairs rather than just one. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're almost done. Do you guys have anything you want? I want to. I just want to make one more quick point. I know this has been made over and over, but I'm making one more time. If you're listening out there, and you and you have a hesitancy to take care of your own personal financial stuff, like for example, let's say shopping for insurance, just do this tonight during commercial breaks. You can go online and you can compare your current insurance policy to four other ones. Car insurance, home insurance, whatever. You haven't missed a thing. If you're watching sports, well, I feel bad for you. But if you are, <laughs> I'm not a sports fan. But if you are, th there are hours of commercials in a, in a football game mm -hmm. or in any, in any game. Uh, so you just, just do that. Just while the commercials are on, just compare an insurance policy or two. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. And when you're done with that, then you can switch over to, to Cinemax After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> as a reward or, whatever, or have a piece of pie whatever your reward is that works for you just do something simple and do it soon mm -hmm. and then keep doing it uh, that, that's my final thought Emily what do you got uh, I love that small actions done consistently are going to do a lot better than saying like I'm changing everything about everything right now so yeah small actions done consistently and finding a way to enjoy them in the same way that uh, you know if you find a way to enjoy doing your laundry you're going to do better at you know keeping up with your laundry uh, so think of money management as a chore like that it's never going to be done now we're really going to extremes Emily <laughs> you're, you're going to make laundry fun <laughs> well that's why I watch Trash TV Anyway, well, I fall. It's getting anyway. crazy up in this business. <laughs> hey, by the way, colonoscopies are not that bad. You ever had propofol? <laughs> That's awesome stuff. <laughs> the beginning and the end are not so fun, but in the middle, not so bad. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> not so bad. Randy, you got anything else you want to add before I get kicked off the air? Uh, not really. Just once again, uh, as always, just kind of think about what works for you and then think about how you can connect what you're doing with your money to your values in your life because a lot of the time that disconnect makes it harder to want to get involved. So if you can connect your money to being that means to an end that helps you do what you want to do, uh, then it's it suddenly becomes more, f well, I think it suddenly becomes more fun. <laughs> Well spoken. And now, Aaron, is there anything more erudite you can add than that? No, everything on here is absolutely <laughs> no fun whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna I need close to go buy stuff right up. now. I'm gonna shop on on Amazon right now. <laughs> oh wait, I have to find my script. Hold on, guys, we are out of time. But you know what? We're never out of topic, never. So you got to dig a little deeper. You're gonna find links to lots more info in our show notes. And remember, 
If your goal is to make more, to spend less, or to retire rich, your online home is MoneyTalksNews.com. And don't forget to check out Miranda's online home as well. That is Miranda Marquit, M-A-R-Q-U-I-T.com. And visit Emily at her website. That's Emily Guy Birkin, B-I-R-K-E-N.com. If you've got a question, comment, or topic you'd like to suggest, tell us about it. You can email us at hello at MoneyTalksNews.com. That's hello at MoneyTalksNews.com. And one final thing, if you appreciate what we do, then do something for us. Subscribe to our podcast. Takes you two seconds. Really helps us, though. So if you like us, show us and subscribe and tell your friends, too. I'm Stacy Johnson. I'm Miranda Marquette. And everybody gets a badge and a token for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Emily knows what I'm talking about. And I'm Emily Guy Birkin. <laughs> See, you fucked her up because you didn't say your name. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. It's, isn't it in stack? Yes, isn't it in the book yeah. stacked? Yeah, you do yes. get that. But I was waiting for you to say your name. I don't know. Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Tripping up our guest. Okay, let's do it one more time. We'll keep doing this all day if we have to. Three, two, and one. Oh, I think it's fine. We just leave it. Oh, is it? Is it okay? Yeah, <laughs> just leave fine. it. Yeah, it's all okay. good. <laughs> We're done.